Hello, welcome pen friends. Today we're going to do Chris's Ink Pens for November. As we speak, it's October 30th, so one more day of October. And uh, I have a really busy uh, finish off for my week, so I wanted to get this going. So I've got eight pens, fountain pens, and eight inks. Um, so let's just dive right in, and then uh, we will write in my ink journal so you can see how each one of them looks. And I've got all the tiles pulled. So the first pen is the Banu Euphoria in the pink Gaiva. And I, I love this pen. It's got a broad nib, and it's just, oh boy, it's a spectacular all-star in my collection. And it was sent to me by a pen friend, along with this pen too, who was downsizing their pen collection. Um, so thank you, thank you. And they want to remain anonymous. Um, this one is the Banu uh, Luminous Amber, and it's Briolet, Briolet or Briolette, and it has a broad nib on it. I think what I'm doing is moving the, the little number five broad nib unit from this one over to the scepter back and forth, because the, there's a, a fine nib and a broad nib, but we are now landing on, oh, it looks like I need to clean the inside of that cap. That's not nice. I should have done that. It's a broad nib on here. So yeah, I'll definitely be doing that and getting that whatever's in there out. Hopefully it's nothing <clears throat> serious. I don't think it is. <clears throat> okay, next up is the Lamy Safari in charcoal. And I have an extra fine Lamy nib on here. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you know how I love broad Lamy nibs and fine nibs. But this one has an extra fine and I have a special purpose for it. So, okay, then next up is Lamy Safari Terra. And this does have a broad nib on it. In fact, that's been moved around so many times. Uh, it doesn't have the black broad nib I usually have on it, but that's okay. Another one that looks like it had a little incident there, but... Okay, <laughs> mercy. I don't know if it's safe around here right now or not. Okay, next up is the, uh, I haven't written with this in a while. It's the Opus 88 Colero in red. I've already got the, the uh, ink reservoir or the, the little shutoff valve opened up for our, for our writing sample. And I've got a broad nib unit in it. It's one of my very favorite pens. So it has a really juicy flow and it's just, it's just so reliable. Um, it's an eyedropper pen, which makes it different than all the rest of these. Uh-oh, our friend is coming, but hopefully he'll be satisfied with... Coco is the cat that likes to come under here and just wreckage <laughs> ensues. But, okay, let's see. Here we were, right here. This is a Gen Hao 80 with the little gold clip. And I do have a Lamy... Uh, you know, a, an official Lamy calligraphy nib on it. I'm, I'm giving this a try to see how I like it with the nib that I, I mean, the ink that I picked. And I think it's, it will probably be a lot of fun. Then next up is a little pen I haven't written with for a while, but it's super smooth. It's impressive. Um, it's a Moon Man or May John, uh, but it says Moon Man on it. So I go with that whenever it's still stamped with that brand. Uh, P136 has a medium nib and it's just a delight. It's a piston filler. Um, this was sent by a pen friend as well. In fact, I was noticing, let me make sure I remember, I'm going to, well, we'll do this first, and then I'll tell you what I was noticing, <laughs> if I remember. Okay, this is the Twisby Eco in Jade with a broad nib. One of my, my favorites, and I kind of like to use a darker green to contrast it with, since I'm not really into the light, light shades, but I, I love the look of it, the jade. Okay, so what I was noticing was that half of these pens were gifted to me. These two, and then um, these two. So the two Banus in the beginning, the Opus 88, looks like I'm trying to play piano here, and the Moon Man P136. So that kind of plays, and I did not plan it that way. You know, so that kind of proves out that thing I was telling you about the other day about how half my pens are, um, you know, gifted. So um, anyway, let's dive right into the ink journal and we'll write with each one of these real quick. Okay, so uh, first up is, uh, I did put J. Urban Emerald of Chivore, the 1670. It's a shimmer ink. I put it in this uh, Benu Euphoria, even though it's not a, a color match. I just like, I like the ink. I love the pen. I, you know, I'm kind of crazy about it. So, no, no, Coco, you've got to stay there, honey. Um, 
he's he seems to be radar for when I'm doing this so I'm going to be a little bit on edge because I don't want anything to fall down. Um, here we go just a, a really flowy broad nib and it's emerald of Chavor does lean blue but it's it, it's a teal and on on the screen it's going to look blue it throws me off every time but that's the way it goes. Um, you'll have to get a sample if you're interested in it because you want to make sure you get an accurate color. So Bennu Euphoria it's a fire hose. Stay there, Coco. Pink. Uh-oh, it's not working out. Oh. oh dear, he's really he's really on the roll right now and he's always oh, walking fast and he's not very happy with me, but I just spent hours with him in the library and and it, I thought maybe he'd be okay with me doing the video on my own, but it's okay. He doesn't mean any harm. He's just too big for the set. And when he was just a kitten that fit in my hand, he could have come right up here. <laughs> Real easy. So, Jay Urban. Now, that was my fault. I really went quick right there. Emerald. Love Shavor. And I do like to do a little smear test because... It just shows me how wet the ink is, and this is super nice and juicy. And these broad nibs and feeds on the Benoves, they're really good for the shimmer inks. I've been having a little bit of trouble with some of my Twisbees with shimmer inks. Darn it, where the, I guess I've got too much shimmer, you know, collected up and then they clog up, which it's not in every case, so I don't want to generalize too bad, but but it, it disappoints me, but I haven't had that happen with the Banu with the broad nibs. Whoops. I really meant to put, uh, you know, I want to keep track of it, even though I know that has a broad nib on it. I want to put it there so I can remember. Okay, then next up, <clears throat> this is the the Banu <laughs> Briolette. Briolette in Luminous Amber, and I did put, I love a brown ink in this pen, so I put the Pilot Orochizuku Horsetail Brown, or, um, yeah, I can't pronounce that, maybe you can, but it's a gorgeous ink, it has a little bit of water resistance, it has a lot of red in it for a brown, and I, I know I love it, so. I had it in here once with uh, the fine nib, so now let's see how it does with the broad nib. Violet, Luminous, Amber. We'll do a little bit of abbreviations. It's the only one I have. I don't have to worry about forgetting which one it was. So, um, And then it's Pilot. And I think we'll just put Horsetail Brown, since I can say that. And we'll do a smear. Super nice and wet. Again, even the number five, this, this, this pen has the smaller nib unit, the number five. And the Euphoria has the number six larger one. These are really good writers. So, you know, it, it's, it's been my, my f most fun brand this year. So, okay. Now, I don't have a tile for this one. Uh, long story is that I'm running low on my paper and I've got to order some, but I've kind of got exactly what I need for to get through the ink vent and everything. So I did it on this one. These were sent by pen friend Marilyn and I thought, well, that's handy. I just want to quickly um, see what this looked like. I did let the ink set for 10 minutes. It's, uh, I had tried something else and it smeared all over and I knew this, that this is a very uh, permanent ink. So it's just, you know, with a paintbrush, putting that much down. So I've got to do some more experiments to find out exactly where it falls. Um, yeah, or, or exactly where it falls. Now, this is interesting. Suddenly I'm having... No, okay. Okay, this is <laughs> the Lamy Safari in charcoal. All of a sudden I, I saw the Lamy nib and I was thinking, am I going to say the wrong ink that I have in here? But no. No, we're just, uh, <laughs> it's just a, a second Lamy nib this time. This is an extra fine. So it's Lamy Safari. I had to get on my inventory to look up what this was because I don't think about it much. And in my inventory, inventory says charcoal. You could fool me because I just don't remember. 
I just, I got it because I really liked it. I, I like the matte finish on the Safaris and I like to have a color like this, uh, either real contrasting color, not silver, or um, the actual stealth like this. I, I really enjoy that. Well, the, the cap doesn't want to stand up. So this is platinum, carbon black. And I believe Penfriend Maryland sent this sample. And yeah, it's nice and juicy. And it's got, you know, I'm trying out this extra fine nib in my little planner to see how it does. I've got a lot of stuff I got to write down in the planner. And I probably will use some note taking pages on the little Hobonichi that I'm using uh, during the events this week and that where I'm going to have a lot of waiting room time. Okay, so next up in the Lamy Safari Terra, I put Robert Oster Antelope Canyon. It's a Pen Chalet exclusive ink that was, this ink was sent to me as a pen friend gift. And I, I really like it. I tend to forget, I don't know why, about this ink. Because this is actually flowy enough for me. I like it a lot. And it's, um, well, of course, I picked a broad nib, so that helps. But Lamy Safari Terra. And I'm not sure if it's Terra Red. Uh, or just Terra, and I don't know where that even comes from right now in my brain. It has a broad nib, but we'll just put the question mark so we don't get uh, to misleading people on the name. It definitely is Terra something or Terra. So it's Robert Oster Antelope Canyon. And, it, you know, to me, I'm seeing this as a nice burned orange or... It's, it's bright, but it's not, um, it's not a Halloween pumpkin orange. It, well, maybe it is. I shouldn't say that. It's not a kindergarten orange from your crayon set. It's darker than that. So I actually haven't looked at an actual pumpkin in a while, so I can't really say that it's not a pumpkin color. Okay, so next up is the um, Opus 88 Colero in red with a broad nib. And my favorite... Um, one of my favorite reds, and definitely my favorite Ferris wheel press ink ever, Algonquin Maple. I love the name of it. I love how it kind of looks like red, but then it looks a lot like the very rarest of the leaves, the maple leaves back home in Vermont. Um, you didn't find as many that were this color. Um, you always found more yellow, more brown, but not as many of the reds. And so I used to pick those up the most often. And, uh, you know, Ferris Wheel Press is a Canadian company, so it doesn't surprise me they'd have a good handle on fall colors like this. So, Opus 88, Colorol. Uh oh. Oh my, that's just some fancy mess up there. Colorol Red with a broad nib. Um, this eyedropper has great capacity and you can just keep the shutoff valve open a little while you're writing to have nice flow and I love it. <clears throat> Ferris wheel press. This this is one of the ones that was sent to me as a gift and it, it got me completely started on Opus 88 as I, I love them. Algonquin Maple. Nice and juicy. Oh, these would be great for letter writing, and I am behind. Again, it happens, you know, pretty quickly because <laughs> uh, avalanche of mail comes in. I get a little bit behind, but I want to enjoy it and take my time, so <laughs> that's another factor. But these, will, these pens will help me because I'm so excited about writing with them. So let's see. I don't know how many I have on my list right now. It looks like... Six. Okay, I think I might have gotten better since the last time, or maybe it stayed the same because I sent some out and got some more in. Um, this is a Genhao 80, and I love these. I just love them. It ha they have a little uh, converter in them, and they're very inexpensive, and you can upgrade them immediately by just sticking a real Lamy nib on. And this is one of those that I'm still experimenting with, the Lamy calligraphy nib. The cap on this one and the band is uh, gold. Um, you know, it kind of has that that Lamy 2000 look without the price tag, that's for sure. Um, then when you get inside the pen, of course, it's not a hooded nib. It's different. It's more like, I guess, the 
the other Lamy. Maybe it's Studio, maybe it's something else. Um, but I did put uh, Lamy Dark Lilac 2016, the original. I, I have a little bit of sample left. It's one of my favorites, and I kind of like it this time of year. You know, a dark purple really, really suits me in, uh, you know, where we're just trying to get into fall here in South Texas. Um, Jin Hao, 80. Uh, and then I'm going to put Lamy Calligraphy. Okay, and uh, I'm going to put gold just so that I know that it's the one with the gold cap, just so I specify what I was writing with. And it's Lamy Dark Lilac. Um, if I do it right, I end up with the, you know, the downstrokes are much thinner and it, and it looks really nice. I don't know how this ink will do with this nib, so we'll find out. And of course, in the middle of November, I'll come back in with a progress report. But I'm excited about this one. I think it'll be fun. You can't go wrong with Lamy Dark Lilac ink anyway. Okay, next up, a really fun one is that the Moon Man P136, a piston filler with a super smooth, I didn't have to do anything to this nib, medium nib, another one that's a pen friend gift. And it, uh, I've got a little gifted sample in it of Conway Stewart Tamar. It's a, just a delightful bright blue. Um, I wanted to try all three of those samples. So next month, or well, December's gonna be weird. Maybe before I get through, I'll add on the purple one. Um, for this month, I should have probably done that, but I wanted to start with just eight. So this is uh, Moon Man P136. I'm not sure about the color name, but it is blue, so I'll keep it at that. And it's a medium nib, just super smooth, so much fun to write with. And I haven't found an ink it didn't like yet, so Conway Stewart Tamar. I'll spend a little extra time doing, you know, who sent what, except for where they want to be anonymous, for the uh, description box, because I think I could get hung up and say the wrong thing and mess up all over the place <laughs> about all the generosity, because it, it starts to get really um, like a, a mixed recipe in my mind here. So, Okay, last but not least is the Monteverde Olivine that I put in the Twisby Eco Jade. And I, I love this one. And I, I love seeing it with a, a darker green. So I just love that. Let's see. Are we still in? Yeah, we're still in somewhere in the frame. I think Coco went to lay down with Manuel. Poor Coco. I just tried so hard to, to give him a lot of attention ahead of time, but it didn't work. Uh, Twisby Eco Jade. Broad. I was going to say medium, but no, that's a broad. Um... I've had this sample a long time. It was full. It was completely full, and it's getting low now, but it's one that <laughs> if I didn't have a, you know, a couple lifetime supplies, I would be buying it because it's beautiful. Monteverde. Olivine. And I think this was, is uh, the pen friend who sent the sample, I think it's her favorite green. And it's been a long time. I, I, in fact, I was looking up to see if, you know, her address, because we haven't written back and forth in a long time, and I'm hoping that everything's okay. So, okay, that is the lineup. Let me switch the shot just for a minute. There, I just thought we would kind of look, look at the palette for a minute before we move over to the library. Um, I think I did a fairly good job of kind of hitting some of the main colors, uh, considering this my orange, and then, of course, the black, and brown, and teal, and then green, blue, uh, purple, and red, although <laughs> at times this looks red-orange, but it right now, of course, it looks red, and in the writing, let's see how did it come across. Well, it still comes across pretty red there, but you can see when you just look at the smear how it, it's, it's just a really nice, unique little color. I like it a lot. Um, and let's see, we're talking about the only one with, the only two with water resistance. The, uh, the Pilot Brown, the Horsetail Brown, has quite a bit, but not, you know, not, uh, it's not, I wouldn't consider it permanent. And then the Platinum Carbon Black is known to be permanent, 
and you just see that surface ink, I guess, that even after 10 minutes hadn't fully dried. So I need to get pretty scientific on those black inks to give them a good uh, chance of showing what they're really going to do once they're dry. Um, but I'm going to try using it on envelopes. I'm sure it'll be just great um, for that. And uh, that's one of the, the reasons that I, I inked that up. And we'll just kind of see how it, how it goes. <laughs> um, probably... Uh, I'll use it for envelopes and for my little planner with the extra fine nib in it. So I think I'll move over to the library for just a couple minutes here. I was going to say seconds, but minutes. And, uh, and then we'll finish up with a little chat. There, so I am... Uh, I'm over here in the library and I think I must have stopped the video, so I'm going to have to splice it together. Oh dear, that's, I must have pressed the wrong button. Anyway, you're not, <laughs> you wouldn't know that if I didn't blabber it, so. But here's the second part of the video, which it will be seamless, hopefully. Um, so those are my eight pens and inks for November. I'm excited about them. I always am excited about getting to change pens and inks and get a new, you know, kind of a new bunch of colors going. Um, I did have one that didn't work out right from the beginning. I had put in, um, in the Twisby Eco Rosso, I put in the Diamine Spiced Apple from the, I guess it was from the 2022 ink vent, and it wrote like three words perfectly, and then it clogged up, and I could not get it to behave from that moment on. So I was really disappointed in that, and I wanted to use that red Twisby, and uh, I also wanted to use that ink, so I thought, well... I don't want to let that just stop me and freeze me and, <laughs> you know, because Friday's coming quickly and I've got a lot to do that day. So I said, okay, I'll put the pen aside for a moment anyway. It's over on my desk and I'll, I'll figure out what to do. I'm just not sure. So um, those are the ones and I'm excited. I think it'll be really good. Um, I've got a few. I've got Twisby Ecos that I'm using. Uh, writing them dry over here in the library room at my little desk and so there's that and then mostly what I just a very few left that have ink in them I'm going to probably just clean them out they're they're getting really to the end and I don't want them to just dry up and and harm the pen so I'll be cleaning those too I've got a lot to do the rest of today and then Thursday to be ready for a different sort of day on Friday so um I wanted to talk about a movie but I don't have the I don't have the movie. The way that I watched the movie I'm going to talk about is um, Manuel was ordering stuff on Amazon and I got the, um, I guess they call it a, a digital credit when you say no rush. And so he said, no rush. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, let them ship it all together. And so I got the credit so I could watch the second movie of the Inside Out, the Disney Inside Out 2. And I really, really liked it. Um, so I rented that, you know, with the free digital credits. And um, I had this one here is one my counselor he gave it to me as a prescription to watch it because, you know, it deals with emotions and how the emotions can control our life. If you've seen it, you know what I mean. And if you haven't, you really should see it. It's They're cute movies. Um, I really liked the second one. Uh, we didn't take the time to re-watch this one. I've watched this at least three times. Um, because Manuel was ready to watch it with me, and I thought, well, let's we'll watch it together. But now I want to see this first one again. But in the second one, she's a teenager, so I won't give anything away. But if you're looking for, you know, kind of a, the opposite of stress, because it really, really, really makes you think, especially when you're, you're looking, each character represents a, an emotion. And in the second, in, in Inside Out 2, you meet like, I think, four new emotions that w didn't play a, a big role in the first one. So it, it is beyond clever. And I can see why my counselor wanted me to watch it a couple of years ago. This was, gosh, I don't know when this came out. I'm always really bad at trying to find it says 2015, but I don't know, you know, <laughs> who knows? That has something to do with the copyright, so I don't know. I, I sometimes find out that I have to actually look the movie up and see, you know, what year it was put out. So I don't have a lot of chat today because I just did the pen chat, but I would like to say that I really am enjoying the comments. I'm still responding to comments from that one because there were quite a few, and uh, I think that 
Yeah, I, I think it's really it's really good because our conversations in the um, comment section are really important to me, and and I think they are to a lot of people. Um, I think if you do have the time to read the comments, it's for the most part ninety nine percent, you know, uh, positive and enriching to hear other people's perspectives and everything. And so we were, you know, we were discussing a little bit of the flip side you know sometimes they're not so favorable which is very rare anyway and uh but i got so many so much perspective from reading the response to that and actually i was afraid i was afraid to i thought oh why did i do that you know why why did i choose to talk about they, they i didn't choose to talk about it in a hideous way or anything like that, but I did uh, open up that, <laughs> that box. But uh, thank you, because there were so many g ideas and fresh perspectives that um, and that gives me whatever the, the juice or the, you know, the energy to, uh, to realize, you know, the directions that I want to go in. And I've, I've learned a lot. Anyway, I always learn something <laughs> from, from the comment section, but... Um, yeah, so that's all I, I had to say on that. And in fact, I don't, I just don't have anything new. So we'll leave it at that. But I would love to talk about uh, what you're going to write with for November, um, pen-wise, ink-wise. Or maybe you're going to do 30 inks, 30 days. I just don't trust myself to try to do that without pressuring myself. Because um, I just, I know already of, of several appointments that I'm going to be going on. And so those days, for some reason, I'm just like a cat. I don't know if, if you have cats and you observe your cats, at least my cats, they have routines and they have rituals and oh, please don't mess them up because they don't like that. <clears throat> In fact, that's what I'm finding with some of these appointments where they just seem thrown off for the rest of the day. If I'm not here and, and I cannot conduct their schedule exactly the way they want it to be, it's a little bit hard on them. And I feel like I'm like that, you know? So <laughs> it's like if I were to do the 30 eggs, 30 days, and then in the morning, um, I couldn't do the ink from 7 to 7.30 or whatever time at all. Then I got to do it different every day. I'm, I'm not really good at that. <laughs> I'm much better at, at precision uh, scheduling and stuff, which life doesn't always support. So um, you, have to, you have to be flexible too. But, <laughs> but I watch my cats and I see how they, they do things. And bless his heart, Coco, he just goes to his plate at nine o'clock every morning. And, and if it's still there, if I haven't picked it up, like if I see it's empty, I sometimes am lazy and wait to pick it up. Well, he'll just throw it, you know, because he wants to eat at that particular time. And so here we are with a looming time change and three cats that think, you know, they have to do X, Y, and Z on an exact you know, schedule. Well, you know, if you have cats, unless they happen to be different because the last cats I had were not, <laughs> I don't know. They just seemed a lot more laid back. So maybe there's a change in the cat <laughs> atmosphere or something. Um, anyway, I can see that it's time for me to go do something. So I will let you go for now. And uh, please let's talk in the comments and take care, be safe and see you later. Bye.